Movies. Oh. Music. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, all you people of YouTube. My name is Elon Osborne, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about movies, audio, and music. And today I want to get into a little bit more of IMAX Enhanced. I know it probably piqued your interest when you noticed that a lot of the MCU movies on Disney Plus were now offered in IMAX Enhanced. So I want to dive just a little bit deeper because Disney Plus now offering IMAX Enhanced as far as the aspect ratio is concerned is just the tip of the iceberg. So hopefully I answer some of the questions that have been nagging you about IMAX Enhanced and maybe bring up some things that you weren't thinking about. Hopefully. <laughs> Last time I checked, I wasn't a mind reader. Hmm. Darn. So just to start off, maybe we all knew IMAX as just, it's in the theater. I went to see a movie in IMAX. The screen was super huge and tall. Maybe that's your experience with IMAX. Previously in the 90s and the 2000s, if anything was shot in IMAX, it was typically something you would see at observatories. Maybe there was a dome. It was in space, nature documentaries, that kind of thing. Because in order to film something, back in the day with IMAX, it required these gigantic cameras that were film. And typically 35 millimeter, 70 millimeter film cameras would run vertically. But IMAX cameras, the film would actually run horizontally. So that allowed you to have a bigger picture. I'm not gonna go into all the history of IMAX, but long story short, think of IMAX now as a competitor to Dolby Vision plus Dolby Atmos. IMAX Enhanced means that they have set some standards as far as picture quality and sound quality in order for a particular movie or documentary to be considered IMAX certified. So IMAX picture quality isn't just about the aspect ratio because you may have noticed when Disney Plus offered IMAX Enhanced that it now basically took up your entire 16 by nine TV because IMAX aspect ratio is 1.9 to one, almost twice as wide as it is tall. Whereas typically Hollywood movies will be shot in 2.39 to one aspect ratio. So that means it's a wider picture, but those black bars are a lot thicker. I'll be honest, back in the day, that's what I preferred because I just thought in my head, oh yeah, the picture is just so wide and the scope is just too gigantic for my TV to handle it. So they gotta put some black bars in it just for me to see the whole picture. Whoa. But honestly, I'd say within the last year or two, I've come to appreciate when a picture takes up the entire 16 by nine frame because it just looks bigger and bigger is more cinematic. But honestly, up until a few years ago, it was actually really hard and really expensive to use IMAX cameras. But as of September 2020, IMAX then created a program called Filmed in IMAX, which greatly expanded the amount of certified IMAX cameras you could use. So let's take a look online for a second to kind of break that down. So as you can see here, they can use any digital cameras certified in the program, they meaning the directors and filmmakers, which are Ari Alexa LF large format and Mini LF, Panavision's Millennium DXL2, Red Ranger's Monstro and Sony Venice's cameras, as well as the aforementioned Alexa 65 IMAX system. So movies like Dune, and Top Gun Maverick were literally the first two movies in Hollywood to be certified in this new filmed in IMAX program. Because a lot of times if something was in an IMAX theater just over the past 10 years or so, typically it wouldn't actually be filmed with IMAX cameras because IMAX certification can also mean that certain picture quality standards and audio quality standards were applied in post-production after it was filmed. You may already be familiar with the fact that the director Christopher Nolan frequently uses IMAX cameras for a lot of his action scenes in The Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, Interstellar, Dunkirk, and Tenet. But one great thing about Disney Plus adding the IMAX enhanced experience is the fact that Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame were the first films in Hollywood to be exclusively shot on IMAX cameras from beginning to end. 
So really, if you're wanting the full Atmos enhance, <laughs> Atmos enhance, whoops, Freudian slip there. So if you're really wanting the full IMAX enhanced aspect ratio experience for the entire movie, you can watch Avengers Infinity War and Endgame and it'll take up the entire real estate of your TV. Because going back to Christopher Nolan's movies, the aspect ratio would shift from pretty thick letterbox bars to almost nothing during those action scenes. So jumping online again, let's go to Disney Plus, Marvel, and now they even have an IMAX enhanced category. Shang-Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings. It's not just the aspect ratio. IMAX enhanced also includes just picture quality standards that have been applied to it, just like Dolby Vision. So just think of it as a slightly different Dolby Vision, right? Black Widow, it's mainly that prison breakout scene that was shot in IMAX. Other than that, it's mostly just your thick black bars for the rest of the movie. But because of the introduction to IMAX enhanced, if you go into Black Widow, for example, now they offer this new category, versions. So you can now choose, oh yeah, I wanna watch the IMAX enhanced version, or you could still watch the widescreen version because that still might apply to a small fraction of you out there who have a cinema scope aspect ratio in your dedicated home theater, for example. IMAX enhanced would look really funny. So it might even project it above and below your actual theater screen and it'd just look funky. In that case, you might still wanna use the widescreen version on Disney Plus. But like I said, that's probably just a small percentage of you out there. Because me personally, heck yeah, I'm, I'm gonna watch the IMAX enhanced version from now on. Okay, so aspect ratio is one thing. Taking up your entire TV, picture quality and color standards, that's the other part. But the other huge factor with IMAX enhanced means audio quality. IMAX has partnered with DTS. So if something is certified IMAX enhanced, that means it's going to be catching a ride on DTS X. So there is such thing as DTS X on its own, but now there is also IMAX enhanced DTS X. Now this aspect really excites me because Dolby Atmos was created with the home theater in mind. So that means it's been mixed and mastered with the dimensions of a home theater in mind. So another way to put that is called near field, where the speakers themselves are physically pretty close to the listening position. Whereas in a movie theater, the speakers themselves are physically far away from you. And that's called far field, near field, far field, right? So the thing about IMAX enhanced DTSX is that they are mixed and mastered basically the same as they are in a movie theater. They just decided, you know what? Screw the home. <laughs> We're just gonna mix and master it as it should be in a theater. And we wanna bring you that exact experience no matter where you are. So in my personal living room, that actually helps a lot. Because since I have in-wall speakers, the physical distance between me and my speakers is pretty distant. My front left and right speakers are like 13, 14 feet away. My center channel speaker is about 12 feet away. My left and right surrounds are like eight or 10 feet away. I've got 10 foot ceilings, so my in-ceiling speakers are you know, six, seven feet away from me when I'm sitting down on my couch. So to know that the same mixing and mastering that happens for a theater is the exact same as what I'm hearing in my home, I honestly do think it helps a lot. It, it helps make the dialogue a little bit clearer because it knows it needs to travel a pretty good distance because the few 4K Blu-ray discs that I own that have been mastered in DTSX honestly do have a more immersive feel to them, especially when it comes to the surrounds. Not only are they louder, but it just seems like there's more activity in the surrounds, or at least I'm just able to notice them a lot more. It's not like I turn up my surrounds and my ceiling speakers whenever I watch something in DTSX. No, it just happens automatically. So the fact that Disney Plus has made statements saying that the audio portion of IMAX Enhanced will soon be rolling out, I am very excited for that. But just a fair warning, it's because I know I have a receiver that supports IMAX Enhanced. 
So just to dive in a little bit deeper, I'm gonna go online to imaxenhanced.com. I'm gonna try and explain some things that might not seem quite as clear to the average consumer. So here we go. All right, so first off, at least if you live in the United States, IMAX Enhanced is such a brand new thing that it's only available currently either on Disney Plus, as you can see here, or Bravia Core, which I think is its own streaming platform just with Sony televisions, I believe. Otherwise, you've got some of these Chinese and Japanese streaming platforms, Rakuten TV. So it's still rolling out in the United States, but if you live in China or you happen to live in Japan, you probably already know that IMAX Enhanced is already a thing. But that also includes DTS and DTSX streaming. Right now in the United States, nobody streams DTS. So that's why I'm excited that Disney Plus said they will eventually be rolling that out fairly soon. But that is going to involve a lot of changes to streaming infrastructure, really. So now when I scroll down to this, this is the content that is now available in IMAX Enhanced, either streaming or on 4K Blu-ray. I wish they would be a little bit more transparent with this because they just tell you what is available in IMAX Enhanced, but they don't exactly tell you where to get it or exactly how to watch it in IMAX Enhanced. So basically Disney+, Plus, Avengers Endgame, Disney+, Plus, Avengers Infinity War, Disney+, Plus, Black Panther, Disney+, Plus, Black Widow, Disney+. Plus. Again, remember, these are only the better picture quality and bigger aspect ratio because it's not enhanced audio yet. Captain America Civil War, Disney+, Plus, Captain Marvel, Disney+, Plus, Doctor Strange, Disney+, Plus, Guardians of the Galaxy, Disney+, Plus, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Disney+, Plus, Iron Man, Disney+, Plus, Shang Chi Disney Plus, Thor Ragnarok Disney Plus. The Equalizer 2. I'm pretty sure that's one of those few that's only available on IMAX on Fandango now because if we jump over to Blu-ray.com, if we look up the Equalizer 2, here it is. This is how I check to see if it actually is IMAX enhanced or not as far as the aspect ratio is concerned. So as we can see here, aspect ratio 2.4 to 1. So since it doesn't say something like 1.85 or 1.77 or 1.9 and 2.4, then that tells me that as far as the 4K Blu-ray is concerned, you're not gonna get actual IMAX enhanced stuff because also the audio is Dolby Atmos. So I think that particular title, the only way you're gonna get IMAX enhanced, I guess, sound and picture is on Fandango now, Ghostbusters. Because as, as you can see too, the aspect ratio on the or 4K Blu-ray is 2.4 to 1. We don't see 1.9 anywhere. It's also been remastered in Dolby Atmos. You can see here the actual cover of it is not what it shows here. So I think that is only on Fandango now or whatever. Jumanji, the next level. Now, if we look that up, it even says IMAX enhanced in this little parentheses here. But what is IMAX enhanced with Jumanji, the next level is only the audio. Because as you can see, the aspect ratio is 2.39 to one. So you're gonna have thick black bars the entire movie, but I do own that movie. And when it plays, my receiver says IMAX DTSX. So I do know that the audio is definitely IMAX enhanced. And let me tell you, it sounds phenomenal. So I do like IMAX enhanced DTSX. Going back to the titles, Little Women, if we look that up, yeah, it's not even available yet. So I think that is also another title that's on Fandango now. Bloodshot, again, if we look it up, it's got a Dolby Atmos soundtrack and it's 2.39 to 1. So the only IMAX enhanced version is probably on Fandango now. Fantasy Island, DTS HD Master Audio 5.1. Aspect ratio 2.38 to 1. So that's probably on a streaming service. See, I wish they were a little bit more transparent. I wish they had details next to each title saying where you could actually get the IMAX enhanced experience. A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. This one, <laughs> oh, this one just kind of baffles me a little bit because it says right here, this, it is IMAX and you could see it right here, IMAX enhanced. Of all the movies to be IMAX enhanced, 
a beautiful day in the neighborhood? But you can see there are two different aspect ratios here. 1.85 to 1, which is pretty much your entire screen, and 1.33 to 1, which is pretty much square. So I think that's the, the footage or, or hearkening back to just your regular square TV days. But it has been remastered in DTSX. So it is in DTSX and it does take up the entire screen. So again, of all the movies to be IMAX enhanced, why is this IMAX enhanced? If, if any of you own this on 4K Blu-ray, let me know. Is it worth getting this for the IMAX enhanced experience? I don't know. I'm so curious about this. Zombieland Double Tap. Zombieland Double Tap, IMAX enhanced. The aspect ratio is 2.39 to one and that's it. So you're gonna have thick black letter box bars the entire movie, but it has been mastered in DTSX. So you're gonna get an incredible audio experience with this particular title. Spider-Man Far From Home, 4K. Again, it's a, it's a different cover than what you see on that IMAX enhanced website. 2.39 to one aspect ratio, thick black letter box bars, and it's been mixed in Dolby Atmos. So this is probably another one that's on Fandango now, but you're not gonna get it on Disney Plus because since it's Spider-Man and Sony technically still has the rights to the character of Spider-Man, don't get me started on that. You can only get the IMAX enhanced version in some strange place on the internet. Men in Black International, aspect ratio is two to one. So that pretty much takes up your entire screen but it's been mixed in Dolby Atmos. So it's still gonna be a great experience. I haven't personally seen this movie, but it does seem like the aspect ratio will be an IMAX experience. You'll still get a little bit of black bars on the top and bottom, but they're not gonna be too thick. Angry Birds 2 4K. IMAX enhanced. But this is another one that I'm very curious about because aspect ratio 1.85 to one, that takes up your entire TV and it was mastered in DTSX. So again, of all the movies to be IMAX enhanced, Angry Birds 2, okay. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, 2.39 to one, and that's it. Also mastered in Dolby Atmos. The IMAX enhanced version is out there somewhere. It's probably just not gonna be too easy to find, which is really a disappointment. I really wanted to get an IMAX enhanced 4K Blu-ray version of this, which is honestly what I hope happens from now on. I hope that Disney and just basically every studio out there really starts to embrace the IMAX enhanced experience, especially if it was filmed with IMAX cameras. I thought it was such a disappointment that Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame did not come with an IMAX enhanced version in the 4K Blu-ray that I purchased. I mean, sure, I could just jump on a Disney Plus and watch Avengers Infinity War if I wanted, but to know that I could have had this extra special version having spent money on top of my Disney Plus subscription every month. I just wish moving forward that if anything is filmed in IMAX, that there is an IMAX enhanced version that will come out on physical media. Thank you for joining me on my soapbox. Okay, back to the interwebs. Venom, aspect ratio 2.4 to one, big thick black bars, audio Dolby Atmos. So once again, it's probably Fandango now. Arr. Alpha. I don't even know what that is. Yep, that. It's only on Blu-ray. So yeah, that's probably another obscure one on Fandango now. Bad Boys for Life. Aspect ratio 2.3, 9 to 1. So you're gonna get big, thick black bars the entire movie. But when I did pop it in, my receiver did say IMAX DTSX. And honestly, even better than Jumanji in the next level, I thought the dialogue was crystal clear and the action scenes were so full of energy. I mean, it definitely harkens back to the first two Bad Boys movies for sure. Kind of that same vibe. I'm not like the biggest fan of the Bad Boys franchise, but with this being mastered in IMAX enhanced DTSX, it sounded incredible. Moving on, Transformers The Last Night. Audio is Dolby Atmos, but we can see that the aspect ratio is 2.39 to one and it lists 1.90 to one. So you do go back and forth between thick letterbox bars and super, super thin letterbox bars to take up most of the real estate of your TV. But 
And this is a huge but concerning The Last Night. Out of all the IMAX enhanced copies of 4K Blu-rays that I purchased in the last couple weeks, this one was the most jarring. It says 2.39 to 1 and 1.9 to 1, but there is every conceivable version of letterbox bar thickness in between as well. It's insane. During the entire movie, from shot to shot, it changes aspect ratios. It is so bizarre. It didn't make the experience just unwatchable, but me, I sure noticed it, kind of because I was looking for it, right? I wanted to see which scenes were IMAX and which weren't, because I thought that was the case. I thought it was one entire scene was IMAX enhanced, taking up my whole TV, and then going back to thick black letterbox bars. But no, it is constantly changing from shot to shot. As you can see here, and I'm not speeding this up at all. I'm not doing anything to enhance what you're seeing right now. This is literally how it looks while you're watching it. You can see the aspect ratios. Just watch the bars. They're changing constantly. And it's not just between two different thicknesses. It's between like three or four or five different thicknesses. It is so strange. All right, moving on. Transformers Age of Extinction. So this one, aspect ratio 2.4, and that's it. And the audio is Dolby Atmos. So that's probably another one that's on Fandango now. Top Gun, the original, aspect ratio 2.40 to 1, audio Dolby Atmos. So again, it's probably another Fandango Now title that is IMAX and Ants. Terminator Dark Fate, 2.39 to 1, and Dolby Atmos. Another one. It's on Fandango now, probably. Star Trek Into Darkness. Audio is Dolby Atmos, as you can see here. But aspect ratio, 2.40 and 1.78. So you do get thick letterbox bars at, one, at some points, and then psh, using up the real estate of your entire TV during probably some of the action scenes. Rocket Man, aspect ratio, 2.39 to 1. Audio, Dolby Atmos. So, another one on Fandango now. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Aspect ratio 2.40 to 1. Audio Dolby Atmos. Another Fandango now, most likely. Mission Impossible Fallout. Audio is Dolby Atmos, but... Aspect ratio 2.39 to 1 and 1.90 to 1. Hey, you don't get IMAX enhanced audio, but you do get IMAX enhanced aspect ratios with some of the action scenes. In particular, as you can see that I've put in front of your face now, the scene where they are skydiving is IMAX enhanced. But one really cool thing about this particular movie is it doesn't just jump to the other aspect ratio. If you watch carefully, you can see the black bars start to disappear slowly. Whoa, look at that. Now the black bars are real skinny and it lasts up until this entire action scene is over when they're on top of the building. Spoiler alert, they survive. <laughs> Crawl, I've never seen it. Only on Blu-ray, 2.39 to 1, DTS HD Master Audio 7.1. So probably another Fandango now. Okay, and now we're back. Now regarding 4K Blu-ray, one thing you'll notice if you are on Blu-ray.com, if you just search IMAX Enhanced, then a list of titles will appear where it is IMAX Enhanced. But again, if it's a Hollywood blockbuster or just a movie, you're probably going to get one or the other. Either it's IMAX Enhanced visuals or IMAX enhanced audio. As you can see, not all the ones listed on their website are the ones that you can see here on this page right now, like Transformers, like Mission Impossible Fallout, because a lot of these are specifying that they are DTSX IMAX enhanced. So the audio portion is IMAX enhanced, but not necessarily the video portion. Now, going back to IMAX's roots, the documentaries, Space Station, Turtle Odyssey, A Beautiful Planet, South Pacific. We'll just take this for example. Aspect ratio is 1.78 to 1 with Space Station. Audio is DTSX. So that is both visual and audio. Unfortunately, right now, the ones that will give you both video and audio IMAX enhanced are just the documentaries. 
Well, I take that back. Technically, Angry Birds 2 is both because again, the aspect ratio is 1.85 to one and the audio is DTSX. So that's one, that's one of the few that gives you both. But hopefully because the excitement for IMAX Enhanced has been amplified because of Disney Plus, hopefully now more 4K Blu-ray titles will be coming out with both video and audio IMAX Enhanced including stuff that comes out of Hollywood, like Dune. So I'm pretty sure, well, actually we can take a look. Dune 4K. The information is already there, it's just not out yet. Yeah, Dolby Atmos. And aspect ratio is 2.39. Sorry, it, it doesn't look like it's gonna shift anytime. It's gonna have big, thick, black letterbox bars. So, uh, that's pretty disappointing. I'm still gonna get it because I loved Dune. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm gonna hold off. Maybe now, because of this video, <laughs> they're gonna start giving you the option. Hey, do you want the letterbox bars and Atmos version? Or do you want the IMAX enhanced version? That would be cool if they could give you that option. So I just wanted to point that out when it comes to actual physical media that is IMAX enhanced. You may not be getting both video and audio. While I'm here, just as an FYI, I'm surprised they didn't have this on the IMAX enhanced website. In that little section where it shows you the IMAX enhanced content that's available, none of the Christopher Nolan movies were in there, which is a surprise. But also another movie that I have to mention that is IMAX enhanced as far as the picture quality is Aquaman. Aspect ratio 2.39 and 1.78 to 1. Yes, it was mastered in Dolby Atmos, but the majority of that movie is in IMAX. Along with Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, Aquaman is probably about 80%, 85% in IMAX. So at the very beginning, it's going to have thick black bars, but then as soon as they go underwater for the first time to Atlantis, boom, then it's IMAX for days and days. But pretty much everything in Atlantis is in IMAX, so it's gonna take up your entire screen. And 1.78 to 1 means like there is virtually zero black bars. Sometimes you get real skinny black bars with stuff that's IMAX enhanced, but 1.78, it's taking up every square inch of your TV. So that's definitely one that I recommend if you wanna have some IMAX enhanced visuals. You know, the movies, I think not that great, but it is real pretty to look at. And the sound, yes, it's Zolby Atmos, but the sound is just as incredible as the visuals. So I just had to put that in there since that wasn't on the list on IMAX Enhanced website. So honestly, that's why I wanted to do that because it's not transparent. It is not detailed. Just saying, hey, these are all IMAX Enhanced, ta-da. That doesn't really explain exactly what you're getting. Are you getting the audio? Are you getting the video? Are you getting a little bit of both? Where can I find it? So it's a little misleading. So that's why I wanted to let you know what I found out when I was researching this myself. So now the big question a lot of you are probably thinking is, how can I get IMAX enhanced? Do I need a new TV? Do I need a new receiver? What's the deal? So let's jump back onto the IMAX Enhanced website. Because as you scroll down, hey, certified devices. It's all here. <laughs> if you want if you want to do your own research or dive a little bit deeper on your own, it's all here. Let's go to TVs. Before I get into this, as far as TVs are concerned, me personally, I'm going to tell you now that TVs, I believe, aren't the end-all be-all when it comes to the IMAX enhanced experience. I personally still use an LG 65 inch OLED and when I'm watching those IMAX enhanced Jumanji the next level, Transformers the last night, they still look phenomenal, but you can't exactly win them all. There are TVs out there that are IMAX enhanced certified, but the LG OLED TV that I have is Dolby Vision certified. So since they're competitors, you're not going to find a TV that is Dolby Vision and IMAX Enhanced certified because that would be a conflict of interest. Or who knows, maybe there is going to be some marriage between a particular brand like LG. Maybe they'll adopt 
Dolby Vision, and IMAX Enhanced. Hooray, everyone gets along, who knows? But for now, they're still competing. So it's gonna be, you either have an IMAX Enhanced TV or a Dolby Vision certified TV. But I can tell you right now that the picture quality still looked phenomenal with these IMAX Enhanced 4K Blu-rays that I was watching. So that's why I say TVs, eh. You can certainly go above and beyond if you're just team IMAX enhanced and screw everyone else. By all means, do it if that's your game. So going back to the website. All right, TVs, Sony Bravia X90J, Sony Bravia A90J, Sony Bravia A80J, TCL X915, Sony XR-Z9J, Hisense U8G, Hisense U7G, Sony Bravia Z9J, Sony Bravia X95J. All right, we're around the horn. Obviously Sony is all in with IMAX. So if you happen to have one of those Sony TVs already, cool. You are set up for the best premium IMAX enhanced picture quality ever. Projectors, the Sony VPL VW1025ES. Just a sidebar, you think they could come up with product names a little bit better than just a bunch of numbers and letters, right? Come on, Sony, give it a name. The Crystal Falcon, the Mirror XD, I don't know. The Sony VPL VW325ES, VPL VW715ES, and apparently that's it, just those three. Speakers, again, I'm gonna put a little caveat on this, kind of like with TVs. Speakers are speakers. So I'm not personally gonna just run out and get these IMAX certified speakers just because they're IMAX certified. Now, this isn't a knock on Polk at all, but particularly because Polk is literally the only speaker out there currently that is IMAX certified. I know that their Legend and Reserve series speakers are incredible, but I'm personally not like a huge fan of Polk. So yeah, this is probably another thing that you don't need to just rush out and get. If you wanna have floor to ceiling IMAX certified everything, speakers are speakers. Go with what you think sounds the best to you. So as I was saying, the Polk Reserve series and the Polk Legend series are currently the only certified IMAX speakers available. As you can see, there is one soundbar that is IMAX Enhance certified. But get this, it's not only IMAX Enhance, here, let's just view the product. It's Dolby Atmos certified as well. This is a 7.1.2 system that is Dolby Atmos certified, that is IMAX Enhance certified. And it's kind of like the JBL 9.1 soundbar because these little speakers here detach and you can put them behind you which obviously I would recommend because you always wanna have speakers behind you, but it also has upward firing speakers and it's got airplay. You can connect it to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connection. I really wanna get my hands on one of these. Now that I've gotten into the IMAX Enhance game, I really wanna find out anything and everything about what is IMAX Enhanced, including something like this soundbar. Okay, now, it's probably one of the most important categories that you've all been waiting for. AV receivers. Is my AV receiver IMAX Enhanced certified? Does it support IMAX Enhanced video and audio? Now again, this doesn't mean you have to just race out and buy a particular IMAX Enhanced receiver. It's just that since I personally own one that is IMAX Enhanced, I am very excited because I didn't have to do anything. I'm one of the few out there that when Disney Plus decided to introduce IMAX Enhance to the masses that I double checked and sure enough, my receiver was IMAX Enhance and I thought, awesome. So when the audio portion rolls out, I know that my receiver can support it. But am I telling you to go out and buy something that's IMAX Enhanced? Yes and no. <laughs> Just because I have heard Jumanji of the Next Level and Bad Boys for Life. And honestly, the audio of those 4K Blu-ray discs was phenomenal, but they are going to be your more expensive receivers. Just a warning. <laughs> so let's jump into it. AV receivers, the Onkyo TX-RZ50, although that has yet to actually be released because it keeps getting delayed. 
Also, the Onkyo TX RZ840, Storm Audio ISP MK2, the Trinoff Altitude Series 16, duh, because it's Trinoff, Macintosh MX123A, but even your lesser expensive nine channel receivers are IMAX enhanced, such as the Denon AVR X3700H. I've recommended that one numerous times because it is literally the cheapest one you can get that has a full set of pre-outs. Denon AVR X4700H, Denon AVR X6700H, Audio Control Concert XR6, Arkham AV40, Marantz SR8015, Marantz SR7015, that's what I have, and the Marantz SR6015. Tight! Anthem MRX series, Anthem AVM series, and now we're back around the horn. Now, before I leave this website, I do highly recommend you go to this website, scroll to the bottom to these frequently asked questions because they are actually some really good questions with some really good answers if you're wanting to get more into IMAX Enhanced. So maybe with Disney Plus releasing IMAX Enhanced, maybe it made you think, you know what? I think it's kind of time to maybe make a dedicated home theater, or maybe I need to just upgrade some things or just beef up my home theater a little bit. Well, I know that Dolby Atmos is so popular right now and everybody is aware that it exists, but me personally, I am very excited for what the future holds with IMAX Enhanced, and just the fact that there is a competitor that is starting to come out of the shadow of Dolby Atmos. Because that's when innovation happens that helps us as consumers when there are competitors and not just a monopoly that Dolby Atmos definitely had for many, many years. But now DTS is finally starting to, to rise up and, and make their presence known, especially with this partnership with IMAX. So I am very excited for what the future holds for streaming content, 4K Blu-rays, which I hope will now include an IMAX enhanced version if it was shot with IMAX cameras. Maybe they're going to re-release some 4K Blu-rays with an IMAX enhanced version, like say Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, which I'll probably have to buy even though I already own them on 4K Blu-ray. But anyway, I just wanted to pass along this knowledge that I gained when I was researching this after Disney Plus released most of the MCU movies in IMAX enhanced. And now, I literally cannot wait until DTSX is part of Disney Plus and not just Dolby Atmos. And there you have it. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive into IMAX Enhanced. What say ye? Are you thinking about upgrading your receiver now to something that supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX and IMAX Enhanced? Do you already own one of those various Sony TVs that I was talking about. Let's be honest, LG was definitely the only name that you thought of when thinking OLED, but Sony has definitely stepped up their OLED game in the past couple of years. So I think I might get a Sony OLED in the future. Are you thinking about beefing up your home theater with IMAX enhanced in mind? Or are you just sick and tired of so many different things and you don't know which way to go? I definitely get that. As always, be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them, possibly in IMAX enhanced. And of course, always be listening.